going on today guys got a video coming your way on uh, my uh, 2003 Ford F-250 we are currently under it and uh, we are going to attempt to change out the differential cover um, notorious on older trucks these pinion seals here in the back end or Whatever they are, tend to leak, and this one's been leaking for quite some time. I know the diff pan's not going to fix that, but as you can see at the top of the cover here, it's starting to leak large amounts. So either the cover is completely shot, which judging from the looks is a likely possibility, or um, the seal's gone. I'm going to take the cover off and try to see if I can fix it. So you are under... Um, uh, 20, well, what would it be, 18-year-old truck, almost, uh, 20, or almost 19-year-old truck, and it's been a plow truck in western New York its entire life, uh, 200,000 miles, actually, it's about 20 miles shy of 200,000 miles, I'll probably hit that today, so, make a quick video on this, um, it's a great truck, I've owned it for a long time. And I just, I don't have the heart to get rid of it. So I'm going to try to get it fixed, put the plow on it, and get it ready for the new season. The catalytic converter up there, that's coming off hopefully today too if I got time. We're going to do a catalytic converter and muffler delete. We'll see if I got to that. Anyway, there'll be more videos. I'll be taking, splicing them all together. Show you just the level of rot. And this bed's been replaced once already. So, just show you the level of rot that you get here in Western New York salty roads. So, alright guys. Alright, so we got all our bolts removed. I used the uh, <clears throat> this extendable ratchet I picked up at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 15 bucks. Um, it's Pittsburgh, which I've started switching over to because their lifetime warranty you can literally just bring it in they'll give you a brand new one off the shelf i was uh rock and dirt last for a while because autozone would do the same thing but uh the pittsburgh tools are just more a little more readily available you can actually buy them in kits where the dura last you they want you to they want to nickel and dime you together so um switching over to pittsburgh so far so good anyway let's see how to rock this cover off real quick I'll do it one-handed here. Oh, man, I highly doubt this cover's ever been off. This is since 2003. I don't get a bunch of crud in the rear end either. Let's see if I brought my phone up here. I hope you guys can see that. I don't know if you can or can't. Hopefully you can. Oh, wow. It's going to be a lot of gear fluid. Going to have to buy a lot of gear fluid. Well, that's what we got. I'm not exactly sure what rear end I've got in this thing yet. I've got to look. I know a lot of you guys can tell usually by looking, but I'm not too sure. So, get in there and take a good look at it. it doesn't look like it's in bad shape from what I can see for a 200,000 mile plow truck. I know it's a Dana 60 rear end. I think it's got maybe. 411s I'm not sure there's a tag I'll run it and let you guys know 
All right, so I was able to get a little bit of a better look in here, and it's all in really good shape. It's hard to say if it's been opened or not before. I think it has because, as you can see, there's a little bit of... Uh, it looks like RTV material on the outer side. From the factory, you probably wouldn't see. And some of this metal looks like it was uh, scraped before. So I'm assuming the cover may have been replaced once or it may have been opened up once. It's hard to say, but anyway... Um, you know, everything looks good. Everything looks pretty damn good. Alright guys, so this is the old diff cover. Uh, as you can see, it had some pretty heavy duty rusting. Um... I probably could have cleaned it up and salvaged it and he reused it, but I probably would have been scraping on the dang thing forever just to get the rust off from it, make sure it would seal up pretty good, you know. The inside wasn't in bad shape. I cleaned it up. Like I said, I'm sure it would have been fine. I ended up calling around. Vance Auto Parts had one. It's like $41. I said, well, for the money, I might as well just replace it. So that's what I did. I got a brand new diff cover. Now this one actually has a magnet on the inside where that did not the drain is magnetized well actually it's not the drain it'd be the fill is magnetized so i guess uh this is just you know extra precaution you know and it's an old rear end so i got the pan i got the gasket uh over there at uh advanced auto parts they were the cheapest and they had it in stock Shot over to AutoZone though, picked up some uh, brake cleaner because their brake cleaner is dirt cheap. And I got the 80-90 weight gallon of that and uh, just some motor oil for the snowblower. Anyway, I'm going to try to get this thing put back together. Uh, one thing I did want to show you that I picked up, which I thought was pretty cool. Where the hell is that right now? Picked up a thing of RTB. And it was actually differential RTB in here I thought it was pretty neat so here it is this I haven't seen before but uh, this is gasket maker for differential transfer cases uh, resist friction modifiers and uh, the friction modifiers I guess can break down the uh, gasket material so anyway it was like 13 bucks but I figured screw it um, so yeah actual gasket maker for differentials let you guys know how it is when i get her together all right so we got the differential uh cleaned up here the differential uh axle housing where it's gonna seal on uh i just use a razor blade and some sandpaper nothing great like i said it's a 2003 with 200,000 miles on it i cleaned it up the best i could I don't plan on spraying the entire rear end down with brake cleaner. A lot of people do. Um, I really don't want to get brake cleaner in, in there um, and wait for it to dry and all that jazz. So I covered it up with a clean old white t-shirt I had uh, and uh, keep all the dust and debris and everything on there. Clean it up with that um, just to keep it from getting crap in there uh next we're gonna do the pan we're gonna see if we can seal it up all right all right so uh, i got the seal on i very i did a very very light coating of rtb because i mean in all honesty if you have a gasket you really don't have to use rtb and some guys say you shouldn't because you don't want to double it up but i did such a thin coating and it's really just to hold that gasket in place and in my opinion it's going to help you don't want to over RTB it. So white coat. And uh, we're going to stick it up there. And uh, we'll do a um, bolt on the top, bolt on the bottom. And then we'll go through and turn them all in by hand. But the nice part about using a light coat of RTB is if you're only making a gasket out of RTB, you don't want to crank it down until after you've given it, you know, an hour or two for the RTB to cure and tack up and create somewhat of a seal then you want to crank it down with this gasket 
I can crank it down. I'll give it maybe an hour or two and then I'll open it back up or I'll um, be able to add the fluid to it because I've got the kit and the RTV. So I'll give the RTV a chance to cure, but um, it should work just fine. All right, here we go. So um, I see I got a bolt on the bottom there, bolt on the top. I'm going to give that RTV a chance to tack up before I crank it down because, again, I, I stuck it mostly to the outside of the diff cover. So I, you don't want to get any inside. It's, that's not, no bueno. Um, we'll go through and clean up the bolt holes where the RTV squirted out. And uh, then we'll crank it down. Um, obviously, we crank it down in the next pattern. You don't want to over tighten and uh, you want it to tack up. So like I said, I'll probably go kill a couple hours mowing grass or something. I'll come back out here and we will uh, crank it down some more, put some more bolts on there. So again, light, light, light coating of RTV with the gasket, tighten it back down and then uh, we'll fill it up. All right, well, as you can see, we got our diff cover back on. And I just tightened it down in the X pattern like I showed you. It's been probably an hour and a half. And I uh, got it all tightened down. And now I'm about to add some fluid to the differential. I bought a gallon of gear fluid because it was on sale. And then what I got here is just a standard 80-90 weight that I had a little bit in that uh, container left over. So I had a funnel that has a... Uh, rubber little hose here connected to it it's kind of like a pour spout on the back there so kind of jerry-rigged it up and uh, we're gonna go ahead and see see you see that drain plug right in there I know it'll come out because obviously I've been filling it multiple times so we're gonna pop that out and uh, we'll see if we can fill it up and see how much she drinks. So let's check it out. All right, so we drank one already and uh, we're on the second one. This is the one uh, gallon I bought, uh, 80, 90 weight. Um, again, nothing spectacular. It's not like it's a low mileage young truck, but um, it was like fifteen ninety nine. dollars so. Second fill up, I predict it's probably going to take almost this full container. It'll be about two quarts it'll take. Um, could potentially be th two and a half, three, but I'm thinking it's going to take one more of these, uh, this full one, and we'll be done. Uh, keep you guys updated. All right, guys, finally filled it up. It actually took a gallon, took four quarts, almost. There's a little bit left in the bottom. Uh, you're supposed to just fill it until, you know, it comes out of the fill port and that's what I did for quarts so um that's I guess concludes it just keep an eye on it make sure it's not leaking from the seal um at all so that was a rear differential pan for a Dana 60 on a 2003 Ford F250 5.4 four-wheel drive um if you're curious to how much fluid it holds uh by a gallon other than that pretty uh Pretty random. Yeah, I would say you probably don't have to buy the gasket. RTV would work. They had the gasket for seven bucks, so that's why I bought it. Next time around, you don't have to, but that's uh, that's up to you. So that concludes it, and uh, hopefully it'll help you out. Hey guys, uh, forgot to add in real quick. Just wanted to tell you that the rear end is a 10.5 inch rear end with 373 gears. About two weeks later, been so busy with work, I haven't had time to actually finish the video and, and upload it which i'm doing right now and i wanted to let you guys know 373 is the gear ratio the 411s um and up are are more on the dual rear wheel this is single rear wheel um so that's why it's got a little bit more peppy but uh either way it still gets shitty gas mileage 11 on a good day <clears throat> anyway been like i said two weeks after the fact maybe 50 or 75 miles on it i don't drive it every day and uh as you can see the rear end looks really well there is a differential tag 
on the rear end that identified it and it took me a while to clean it up and treat it so that's what identified it 373 gear ratio 10.5 rear end dana 60 axle uh, thanks for watching